Hi, my name is Dan Elmer and I'm the Chief Engineer at Blue Ridge PBS. I have always enjoyed riding bicycles, but when I moved to the Roanoke area six years ago, I found bicycling to be much more difficult due to the hilly terrain, so I pretty much gave up on it. After a motorcycle mishap that broke my ankle, I knew it was time to quit that hobby and figure out a way to enjoy bicycling again. The answer for me was the electric bicycle, or e-bike. I began reading all about them and soon built my own bike using a kit I purchased on the internet. Once I got the bug, there was no turning back and I've now built several e-bikes and have ridden over 2,000 miles on them. I'm not an expert, but I've gained a lot of practical knowledge that I would like to share with you. It will cover the basics so you can decide if e-bikes are right for you. Furthermore, this is what a typical rider would need to consider purchasing or buying one. I will break down the various topics into short modules to make it easier for you to follow. So let's get started. In this module, I want to talk a little more about the tires. I know I touched on them when I was talking about the three different kinds of bikes, but there's a few more things I'd like to tell you about. We talked about the urban bike and how the tire is narrower and, uh, and has a finer tread. It's mostly on blacktop. Um, the other thing, which isn't as obvious, is that the tire, because it is smaller, isn't going to absorb the bumps quite as well. And um, that's why a lot of your older um, bikes uh, this front fork is actually a member that's designed to take the bumps a little bit. It flexes, believe it or not, and, uh, and that helps with the bumps. But it's still not going to help a real lot if you're hitting really heavy terrain. And this tire is pumped up at a higher uh, PSI. Um, this tire needs to be at about 60 PSI, and the high, harder the tire, um, the harder it takes the bumps, um, but the easier it rolls. And so back in the day with your 10 speed, it was all about trying to get an easy rolling bike because you had to pedal hard to overcome that resistance. Um, so a harder tire and a tire with less um, grips rolled easier so you didn't have to pedal as hard. The other thing is you wanted to make the bike as light as possible. And so that's why people spend a lot of money to make a bike really light so they don't have to pedal to pull that extra weight around. When you go on an e-bike, you're not worried about that anymore. So with the e-bike, you can go to a wider tire, as we see here on this um, um, trail bike here. Um, the, the, tread is much, the tire is much wider. It's, it's fatter to absorb the bumps better. It runs at a lower pressure. Um, this tire will run at 50 pounds quite nicely. And um, it still has fairly good roll resistance because the tread's pretty fine in the middle. Um, and that's where the tire normally rides, but then it's got the knobs on the side. It's a heavier tire. The bike itself is heavier, but because it's an e-bike, you don't have to worry about that. You've got the motor to pick up the extra weight. In fact, I uh, like to say that when you run in, in um, your lowest level assist, it pretty well equals out any additional weight or rolling resistance that an e-bike might have compared to a very expensive, very light um, bike like a gravel bike. Um, an e-bike tends to be about 20 pounds heavier um, than a uh, normal um, bike without a motor and battery. Um, but that 20 pounds more than makes up for itself uh, when you're on the road. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. And then, of course, we have the mountain bike tire. And uh, this has a pretty big knobby tire on it. And uh, you, it's a much fatter tire. And so it really absorbs the bumps well. Uh, has a little more rolling resistance, um, but again, we can make up for that. And you don't get quite as smooth of a ride as you can imagine with all these knobs uh, when you're on blacktop. Um, but I've been pretty pleased with this uh, tire around town because the knobs are close enough together, you don't really feel it and, until you go into the turns. When I'm banking, I feel the knobs on the sides more. But uh, otherwise, it runs fairly well, and I don't have a problem riding that through town and do frequently, but it's really optimized for um, in the mud, in the dirt, on the trails. It's a great bike at Carvin's Cove, um, but uh, from Salem I can bike to Carvin's Cove and I've got to ride on the blacktop, 
and then I've got to ride on some gravel trails to, before I get to the Carbon Cove Trail. So uh, this tire does a pretty good job all the way around, and, and it's you know considered a uh, cross track tire. Um, it crosses over from dirt. Um, now you can get tires that are a lot more aggressive than this with a lot bigger knobs that are more tailored for carbon scope. This tire is a compromise, but it's better. Now another thing I want to mention about tires is that you can get flat tires, of course, and uh, you can buy tires that are much more immune to flats. And this tire, this Continental tire, is one such tire. It's got an extra weave in it to prevent anything from breaking through the uh, rubber and puncturing the inner tube. And I've had two flat tires in two years on this bike, and I, I've switched over to this, and I'm hoping that that's going to rectify that problem. Another thing to talk about is tubeless. Um, this tire and this bike could be tubeless. I do have an inner tube in it, um, but tubeless allows you to run at an even lower tire pressure. Um, which means you can absorb the bumps even more. And you also don't have to worry about the inner tube um, getting a leak. Um, but if you ever get a, a, a hole in this tire on the trail, you have to put in an inner tube to get it pumped back up again. And, uh, and that brings up another thing. If you get a leak on the trail, um, when you have a center drive motor, it's no different than a regular bike. But if you have a hub drive motor, like the urban bike I have here, um, you've got that big hub motor in the back and you've got wires attached to it and it's a much bigger deal to get that back uh, tire off of the bike. It's going to be harder to do that in the field. Um, fortunately, I've never had a flat tire in the four years that I've been riding this urban bike. I've never had a flat tire. So, um, but if you ever do, it's going to be a little harder to deal with. And I'm going to show that in my accessories. I uh, do have a little kit I bring along which has a spare inner tube in it and a tire pump. Um, because if you're on a long trip or you're back in the middle of nowhere on a mountain trail, uh, you want to be able to get back and you don't want to have to walk out carrying your bicycle. So um, it, it pays to be prepared. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention and that there are two different kinds of valve types. Um, there's the Presta valve, um, which is very common in Europe. And you can see that in the picture right now. And then there's a the Schrader valve. The press, the press of valve works pretty well with a hand pump. It's a much better valve um, for a hand pump, um, but it's a little odd and it's narrow and you can't pump it up with a common uh, tire pump uh, like you're used to with the Schrader valves, which is the same kind of valve that's on your automobile. Um, but they do make an adapter. So even if you do buy a bike and it's got that, um, that Presta valve on it, uh, you can, just for a dollar or so, buy a little adapter that screws onto that stem and converts it to a Schrader valve so you can use your car tire pump with it. So don't worry if, if it does, just make sure you get those adapters and, uh, and that'll help quite a bit. In this module, we're gonna talk about accessories. And accessories is one way to customize the bike, to add the things that you want, and to personalize it, to make it your bike. Uh, I'm going to start off with this uh, bike in front of me, this factory bike. This factory bike has a lot of accessories on it already. Uh, they pretty much thought of everything. They've got the uh, fenders on it already. Um, they have the little spring on the seat, which is nice. Um, my wife did buy a bag to put on it. Um, it does have a bell. That's to let people know that you're coming up to them when you're on the trail. Um, she did have to add the water bottle holder. Uh, no bike could be complete without one. And uh, it's got the lights on it built in on the front and on the rear. Uh, these lights come on uh, every time you turn on the electric power. Um, they're always on. And so uh, that's the, so to make the bike more visible. Um, and that pretty much uh, limits the accessories around this bike. Uh, pretty much, uh, my wife likes it simple. She doesn't need anything extra on it. So um, this pretty much has all the bases covered with those items. The next bike I'd like to show you uh, with accessories is the urban bike. Um, the urban bike, I've added a few extra things. I do a lot of riding in the city, so I find a rear view mirror is really helpful. I don't have to turn my head completely to do the head checks. 
Um, I can see cars coming up from behind me just by glancing over to the mirror. I find that helpful. I've added the uh, headlight myself, and uh, this is a rather bright headlight, and it runs off the battery pack, the same battery pack, and I also have a really bright tail light. Um, you'll also notice that I have a package carrier on the back, and I just use an old camera bag that I attach to the package carrier, uh, and that's where I carry my water bottle as well, since I have no place for the water bottle inside the frame because of my custom battery pack. Um, so I added that. I uh, added the spring on the post to help absorb bumps. I've added a padded seat that uh, gives a softer ride, um, so that's uh, a little more pleasant. Um, I added the bell um, so I can signal riders when I'm coming. And um, that's pretty much all the accessories I've added on this bike. And, uh, it rides pretty comfortable. You know, for a 40-year-old bike, it does pretty much... Oh, here's another important thing I wanted to mention to you about accessories. I did add the extended quill. The extended quill raises the uh, handlebars, and I also put on new handlebars that are also raised, and so I have a much more upright sitting position. I find an upright sitting position on a bike to be more comfortable. I don't need to hunch over for maximum speed, and I don't have to worry about wind resistance because I've got an electric motor that'll overcome any wind resistance I'm heading into. And by the way, that's another reason why e-bikes are so nice, is you can ride them on a windy day and don't have to worry about the wind so much. Um, and so th th that extended quill is, uh, you know, a real game changer. But it also means that you're, you know, as with most e-bikes and as with most people who casually ride, you're sitting more. And so pay attention to that seat. Make sure that the bike fits you and that you're comfortable in it so that you don't uh, get a sore rear or you don't hurt your back. And that's another reason why, um, you know, absorbing those bumps is so important. Um, if you're going to enjoy the sport, you want to make sure that you're comfortable in it and it's not hurting you in any way. And that's all fixable for the most part. So pay attention to it. And these are the accessories that I've added to the mountain bike. Uh, we talked about that quill that we raised. The bike, uh, this mountain bike's uh, designed a little differently, but here I also have raised the handlebars. I kept the straight across uh, mountain handlebars, but now it's raised, and again, so I have a, a, a higher sitting position, which I find more comfortable. Um, the mountain bike, I also changed the seat. This came with a very narrow seat with no padding at all, and I found this seat to be much more comfortable, so I added that. And right next to it, you can see I added a very heavy-duty um, package carrier, and the package carrier is where I set my battery on it. So the package carrier is very important. And that's kind of a good place to put a battery if you're building your own bike, because you've got to mount that battery somewhere, and on a mountain bike, that gets it out of the way because I want to keep my water bottle holder open. I don't want to tie that up. We want to keep plenty of water along and stay hydrated. If we move up to the handlebars, I could show a couple other options. I, I do use a little uh, uh, flashlight. It's kind of a bright flashlight that just pops right on there. And I have another light in the back, which I can turn on, which flashes for when I'm uh, riding on the highway. Um, so that's kind of helpful. Make sure people could see it. And another little thing that I like is that I have a little holder for my cell phone. Another thing I did is I added fenders. Um, I like fenders on my bikes to keep the uh, dirt and mud off of me. Um, you know, some people, when they're trying to keep the weight down on their bikes, um, don't like to do fenders. Um, but I don't have to worry about weight. I've got a motor to help, so I put fenders on. A couple other things is you want to make sure you bring a good lock along if you're going to be leaving your bike anywhere. You never want to leave an e-bike sitting unlocked. Uh, you're asking for trouble. I have a little bag here that I throw on the side here. And, and this is kind of handy just to carry my wallet and keys and whatever else I want to bring with me or throw the cell phone in there if I don't have it on the handlebars. And another thing I find really helpful is these panniers, uh, which some people call saddlebags, but Bicyclists call them panniers, and uh, they fit right on here. 
And they're really helpful because I could pack my lunch in there and I have a place to throw my jacket um, or extra shirt or uh, whatever need be. And another thing that I bring along if I'm uh, mountain biking is I'll bring this little kit along and this kit has a, a spare uh, tire in it and, um, and a few tools and, uh, and an air pump. So just in case I would get caught with a flat on the trail, I have a way to fix it and so I can get back home. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to change a tire on one of these bikes um, as long as you don't have a hub motor, which makes it more complicated as I mentioned before. One other uh, thing I've added to this bike um, is a kickstand. Um, I like to have a kickstand on my bike. I don't like having to set the bike on the ground. Um, so this kickstand works fairly well and it kicks out of the way. And, um, but you make sure you get a sturdy one. Don't get a cheap kickstand for an e-bike. It won't hold it up. Um, so you need a strong kickstand. Another uh, accessory I like are these um, pedals I replaced. Um, these have the little knobs and they do a really good job of grabbing your foot, um, the uh, shoes. And uh, you can buy um, special biking shoes, but I have found that I don't really need special biking shoes. I use, uh, um, you know, good tennis shoes or actually walking shoes for um, biking. Uh, or I use um, some um, Keens that have toe protection um, and are strapped um, in a hot summer when I need a little more um, ventilation. But I highly recommend um, these kind of pedals if you're going to be on um, heavy, hard trails or mountain biking. They do a really good job of, of uh, grabbing your shoe. In this module, I want to tell you what to look for when you're buying a brand new e-bike. There's a couple things that you want to consider. There are some advantages to buying it brand new, factory built. Um, a good manufacturer would have done a lot of research and looked into um, you know, the best mix of components for the type of bike that they're offering you. Um, I think these folks did a really good job on this bike. Um, this bike is for a uh, light user, um, probably a, a type of bike that most of the people watching right now are interested in. Um, it's got the fenders, it's got a, a very nice Bosch. Uh, 250 watt motor. Um, that Bosch motor is very efficient and uh, provides plenty of power. Even though I have a 750 watt motor on my bike, my wife has no problem keeping up with me on this bike when we're on trails, um, you know, the New River Trail or um, any of the other trails we ride. It's just a very comfortable um, little bike. Has excellent battery range because the battery is plenty big enough. Um, it's got disc brakes, which is always something to look for. Those are the best, as you um, heard me talk about in, in that one of the other segments. Um, the tires are a good compromise, not too wide, not too narrow, uh, just about right. You know, it's, it's a, uh, just a good general all-round uh, bike, has a good sturdy frame. Um, all the components are good quality, uh, made by good quality manufacturers. and. Um, you know, it's just uh, um, everything is kind of put together real well. So what does it cost? Well, about $2,300 for this bike. Um, you know, that's a, that's a fair investment. Um, my wife just loves it, though. She says it's perfect for her, and she's very comfortable with it. And I'm sure she'll have this bike for many, many, many years. Um, and even if the battery pack should ever wear out, and uh, that's about the only thing, that and the brakes and maybe tires, that can be replaced quite easily. So, um, you know, uh, a bike that you'll actually ride and use, ever, uh, in, in, you know, and you're comfortable with, um, what is the price of that? Uh, well, for this one, it's $2,300. Good solid bike. In this module, I'd like to talk a little bit about building your own e-bike. It's one way that you can save a considerable amount of money if you're handy. Building your own bike isn't for everybody. So I have a few suggestions. 
about whether or not that's a solution for you. If, you're, if you are a handyman and you're good with mechanical um, things and, or you're good with bicycles and you've done a lot of bike repair work, um, modifying a bike for electric is really not that difficult. Um, of course, you've got to have the tools. Um, I've got a little tool kit here, and this has a lot of the special tools in it for working on a bicycle. And, uh, and basically, this is just a bicycle that you're going to add a motor to. So make sure you have the tools. The, uh, it's going to take a little planning. You're going to have to decide what kind of bike you want to do. We talked about the urban, like this bike, um, or the trail bike or mountain bike. Um, this urban bike here, the first one that I've done, um, the donor bike was this old um, multi-speed hybrid bicycle that's some 40 years old. The bike wasn't worth very much. So electrifying it, you could say that the bike itself um, was maybe $50, $75 in value. Um, the motor kit that I bought was about $250. And I built a battery pack which I custom built into this case that goes on the frame, which I enjoy doing, and that required a little bit of woodworking and a little bit of uh, other skills. But uh, I don't really recommend doing that anymore. Um, there's so many good battery packs that you can purchase. Um, you're really better off just to buy the battery pack. You don't really save that much. And, um, you know, a battery pack um, does have uh, some challenges in building your own. So. Uh, and you need more uh, electrical aptitude to do that. Uh, otherwise, wiring these kits together is very easy. You don't need a lot of electrical aptitude to do it. They all come with directions. Um, if you have access to the internet, which almost everybody does, there's all sorts of uh, videos available for you to watch to uh, guide you through the process. The best motor kits will have reviews on them and they will have instructions that will walk you through how to install the motor and, um, uh, and how to attach everything and um, they'll walk you right through it and, and how to set up the little computer which isn't hard but there's a few settings you got to set it for the size of the wheel and, and um, some other aspects and you will want to decide what kind of motor to get and um, the little um, geared hub motors which are great for this uh, area are a little less expensive than the mid-drive um, even though they may be a little less capable, but for most people, they would be perfectly happy with that geared motor. Um, this particular bike, the way it's built, it's got, that, it's got a 500 watt geared motor in the back. Um, I can go 25 miles an hour with this bike uh, uh, on the level um, without too much effort. Um, it's just about as fast as the, uh, the mid-drive. Um, um, but, uh, you know, it is a geared motor, um, so the, the sprocket and the pedaling, that's all separate. That's just for you to add to that power. And I always, I always uh, pedal. I always add power to it. I don't use e-bikes so I don't have to pedal. I use e-bikes so I don't have to pedal as hard all the time. And so that's how I set these bikes up and what's important to me. Now, if you find that it's necessary to have a lot more assist, then you'll want to go with a higher wattage motor and a bigger battery. And if you're using a lot of assist, you'll want to go extra large on that battery. It does add weight, but it will add your range. This bike has only a 6 amp hour battery, so it's got about a 30 mile range. That's not real lot, but I find 30 mile range is about as long of a ride as I care to go to. I typically ride 10 to 15 miles an hour, so, um, you know, that's like a three hour, you know, this bike will keep me on the road for three hours with electric assist, that's as long as I need to go, and I just put it on a charger when I get home. This bike over here, which I also built, is uh, a little different. I had bought this mountain bike with good intentions of riding it at Carvin's Cove. Um, the first couple times I rode in Carvin's Cove, it almost killed me. <laughs> It's a lot of work, uh, mountain biking through there, and I give a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good um, people in good shape that uh, um, bike there, but I find it found, for the most part, a little too strenuous for me. 
Um, so I went ahead and added the uh, mid-drive motor and it made all the difference in the world. Um, it gives me the extra power I need to climb those hills and to uh, go the distance. This bike um, has a 750 watt motor, um, center drive with uh, torque sensing. Um, so the harder I pedal, the more power it can give me, um, depending on how much assist I set the computer for. Um, it's uh, one of the things that I should mention when you add the center drive, um, you eliminate your three gears in the front. This uh, bike had three gears in the front and then the uh, seven gears in the back. I now have just the seven gears in the back, just one gear in the front. Um, you don't need the other gear so much because this bike has the electric assist. So when you need the extra power, uh, you just add more assist and uh, you don't have to, um, you don't need the gear range that you need when you were just pedaling. It was the same thing on the Serban bike. Um, I still have the three gears on the front, but I got rid of the front gear shifter because I didn't need it. Um, I just have it on the center. I can change it by hand if I want to, if I want to extend that uh, top end or if I need a little more power on low end, but I never really need to. I'll say another thing about that. Once you have electric assist, you don't really need to shift so much anymore. Um, because the, you have a lot more range. Um, this bike, I find that if I'm in uh, fifth gear, um, I'm in pretty good shape for, uh, uh, I'll go down to three, maybe two if I'm going up a really steep hill, but five usually covers for all around riding town, around town. Um, and usually about uh, fourth gear, third or fourth gear on the um, urban bike works out about best for me. Um, so now this bike, the motor kit was about $400 as opposed to $250 for that one. And the uh, battery pack um, that I built for this one is an 8 amp hour battery, but it's 48 volts. Um, so that was a little more expensive. You could typically want to, you would want to budget typically about $600 for battery and kit uh, if you're doing a hub motor. And you would want to spend a little more, maybe seven or $800 if you're doing a center drive. Like I say, the center drives are a little more expensive. Um, you can find all of these components and parts on eBay or Amazon.com, um, or at least that's where I bought all my parts. There may be other places that you can find, um, but those two um, have a lot of options and choices. Just be sure to check your reviews and um, make sure you're not buying um, something that isn't of the quality that you want. Um, a lot of the stuff comes from Asia, almost all of the parts and components. But that's true even if you buy a factory bike. Most of the components come from Asia. Um, now, the Bosch motor does come from Germany. And you can get a Bosch motor. Uh, no, I take that back. You can't. The Bosch German motor is only made for built-in um, power plants uh, for factory bikes. You can't get a Bosch motor for a, a do-it-yourselfer. Um, these motors are... Um, made in Asia and um, and they're fairly good they've been fairly good quality good performers I haven't had any issues with them um, but there are some motors out there that are not such good quality so don't buy the cheapest make sure you buy something that's going to be a value that's going to last you a long time and not give you uh, problems or issues and give you the performance that you want. <laughs>